1988 BMW 325i, 2019 BMW 330i. Today on TFL Classics, we're comparing them side by side to see what's changed and what stayed the same. This old 3 Series is known as a BMW E30 and it's well, it's simply believed to be one of the best, if not the best, 3 Series ever made. When this car came out in the early 1980s, it kind of defined BMW styling for generations. It's got a very simple but iconic design. Kidney grills up front, a low but wide stance, and of course, the iconic four headlights. This new 3 Series is called the G20, and it's got a lot to live up to if it's gonna meet the expectations set by the E30. Starting in the front here, you still have the kidney grills, but this time they're actually filled in with plastic. And you don't have four headlights, you have two main headlights, but this is a nice throwback. They're actually separated into four beams by these little shark fins. BMW has stayed true to form in terms of engine layouts because both the old 3 Series and the new one can be had in four cylinder and straight six configurations. The difference being, Every version of the new 3 Series has a turbocharger here in the US, and it wasn't even an option in any engine back in the old one. So, what do these examples have? Well, first off, the E30 has the coolest hinged hood I've ever seen. It folds forward and out of the way. This particular one has the M20 straight six, 2.5 liter, about 165 horsepower or so. And check this out to close it, set it down, and the whole thing folds in. Love that. The new 3 Series has a more traditional hood. You do have to pull the latch twice, and it reveals, in this case, a four-cylinder. This one is a two-liter turbocharged four-cylinder. It develops 255 horsepower. Even the most powerful M3 back in the day had nowhere near the power of the base model 3 Series here in the United States. This 1988 model is an automatic, and it's a four-speed automatic. Which, which is good for this comparison because the new one's an automatic too and when you floor it, it kicks down okay. And then when the engine gets into its upper RPMs, it just, it just sings. It's not really all that quick if I'm being honest. I mean, yes, it was pretty quick for 88 standards, but 31 years later, it's, it's not a fast car, but it's not a slow car either and it will easily keep up with modern day traffic and it'll easily pass modern day traffic if you ask it to, which is pretty good. Uh, and then there's the brakes, which in this car, even in 88, were anti-lock. But yeah, I mean, it really just hums when you give it the beans. It just purrs. Now, you guys out there, the keenest of eyed viewers, may notice one slight difference between the old one and the new one here. Well, this old one's a convertible, so I know it's not quite apples to apples, but these are the two vehicles that we were able to use for the comparison. And it does show something interesting because the 3 Series convertible was kind of an icon of the BMW lineup for years, and you can't even buy a 3 Series convertible anymore. It's called the 4 Series now. But anyways, what's different along the side? Well, first of all, the new one is quite a lot bigger, almost nine inches longer than the old one. So that means that this new 3 Series is more in line with the 1980s E28 5 Series than it is compared to the old 3 Series. But there are a couple similarities. So on the old 3 Series, you have this iconic line that runs all the way down the side and even has a little place here for the door handle. And you actually still get that line on the new one. It's a little bit less pronounced, but it still exists. While this new 3 Series may have faster steering, and it certainly can have heavier if I dial it in a sport, it's not exactly communicative. It's not nearly as good as the steering in the old car. The other thing that's less than good in my opinion is the augmented engine sound. Uh, the two liter doesn't have a great growl as it is, so BMW pipes it in a little bit. And it it's pretty quiet even when it's piped in, but it's, it's just not as pure as that straight six. The new 3 Series has grown in several other aspects as well, not only length and width. Take a look at these wheels. On this old E30, they are small 14-inch wheels rolling on pretty high-profile tires. 
This new 3 Series has the M Sport package, which means we have upgraded M wheels. These are 19 inch wheels rolling on high performance, aggressive, low profile summer tires. A much more sporty setup. The E30 here has, well, pretty conventional door mirrors. They're power operated, but they are itty bitty. Look, smaller than the size of my entire hand. So they're not actually all that useful in traffic, even if they are pretty elegant. The new mirrors are not only bigger, which means they have more surface area and are generally easier to use and safer, but they're also full of tech. <laughs> I mean, check this out. It's got, first of all, a power folding function, which is great in tight parking spaces. Then you've got a turn signal along the side here. Add a little bit of extra visibility, let other people know when you're turning. Plus, it's got the blind spot monitoring indicator. So if someone's in your blind spot, it'll tell you. And lastly, they even have cameras in them, which is part of the 360 degree camera system. That G20 3 Series is significantly more sculpted on the side than this old 3 Series. Sure, you have the line down, you know, the middle of the door, but the rest of it's pretty flat. However, you do have one feature that I really miss in new cars, and that's right here, which are these rubber bumper strips down the side. And what this means is when you open a door, if you're in a tight spot, you're not going to ding someone else's door, and they're not going to ding you because these little rubber strips are going to absorb the impact. Really, I think the biggest change between the old and the new is it's got to be the size. Because the old one is, well, it feels small and pretty tossable. The new one is not huge. It's not an F-150, but it certainly has grown a lot. And, and you can notice that even when you're driving in, in regular lanes because you have to pay more attention keeping it centered. Of course, it's got lane assist and all that modern gizmos that'll help you out. But it is nice driving such a small car where you can kind of rule your lane and pick exactly where you want to be. From the front, an argument can be made that, yeah, there are some similarities between the old and the new with the kidney grills and the four headlights. But from the back, the similarities have <laughs> pretty much vanished. All right, so the badging is in pretty much the same place with the BMW emblem in the middle and then the model on the right. But even this has changed because for the most part, back in the day, this used to make a lot of sense. 325i meant 3 series, 25 was 2.5 liter and i was injected. But on the new one, things have gotten a little wishy-washy. 330i, so on this new one, 3 series, 30 should be 3 liter, but it's not. It's a 2 liter. And on a 340, it should be a 4 liter, but it's not. It's a 3 liter. Um, and then I guess i is correct. It does have injection. The next obvious difference is, well, the bumper. And it's actually a thing I miss about old cars because with these old school crash absorbing bumpers, people would have fender benders or run into things and it, it wouldn't really be a big deal because these old school bumpers would take it. The new bumper is far more integrated. Of course, the cover is plastic, unlike the metal one and the old one, um, and it certainly isn't going to hold up as well on a fender bender, but it does have parking sensors, which will help you back up and avoid having the accident in the first place. Let's talk briefly about trunk space. Now, of course, the new car is much bigger, so the trunk has grown, but the way you get into them has changed a lot too. The old one, you've got your keyhole and it's a button and you push it and only the lid opens, which means if I've got grocery bags or something, there's a high liftover height, something to keep in mind. On the new car, well, there's an electronic catch as you'd come to expect, so just pops open. Now on the new one, because part of the actual body lifts out of the way too, much lower lift over height, much easier to get stuff in. That right there is technological progression. This new 3 Series has X-Drive, and actually X-Drive, or technically all-wheel drive back then, made its debut for BMW in the E30, which means when I floor it, there it goes. Yeah, I don't have to worry about spinning out or if I'm in snow, it's more secure. Of course, this new X-Drive system is way superior than the old 325iX in terms of what it can do. It also means that this car feels like a rear wheel drive car because it sends most of its power to the rear end. And handling wise, once again, night and day. I mean, it's got stickier tires, it's got firmer suspension, it's got more advanced suspension. It's just all around a much more sophisticated vehicle. If you broke down on the side of the road back in the 1980s in your BMW, well, what you did is you got out, you popped the trunk, you open this little flap and check this out, you got a toolkit. And then you fix the issue, but this was a classic BMW thing, the toolkit in the trunk. Now on the new one, you actually also have a flap there, but 
it's a little bit smaller. So if you break down on the side of the road in the new 3 Series, there's a flap here, you pull it out, and you call a number. Because there's nothing behind it, it's just a, a little panel with the BMW roadside assistance number. How hilarious is that? One design aspect I really miss about the old 30 is the super unique exhaust design. If you got a 318, you got one single pipe, but if you got a 325, you got dual pipes and they come swooshing out the side at a really cool and unusual angle. The new one, not so much. The new car has dual exhausts as well, but they just come out the back and I appreciate that they're both real unlike a lot of new cars, but I mean everyone does dual exhausts out the back like this. I want to see dual exhaust out the side at a swoosh. Stepping inside the E30 and you quickly realize just how analog everything is. There's, you know, a hole in the door for a key, which works as it should and you step in and it's got manual seats which work as it should and it's just a very pure driving experience. But there are two things that are exactly the same between the old car and the new car. Of course, the new one has a proximity key. So just walk up to the door handle, open it up, and of course the new one is full of tech. It's got push button start and a 10 inch infotainment screen and a lot of great convenience features. But like I mentioned in the old one, the two things that have remained exactly the same are the seats and this steering wheel. You see, when I drove that E30 for the first time, I was amazed by how comfortable yet supportive the seats were and how clean and elegant but sporty the steering wheel was. And the new car joyfully is exactly the same. The seats are incredible. And the steering wheel is nice and thick and actually still a three spoker. So I'm really glad that BMW kept that. Inside the E30, everything is, well, angled right at the driver. The whole center console here is very driver-centric, very German, actually. I love the gauges, how they're perfectly analog and very clear and easy to read. And of course, I love the computer that lets you know when something has failed. Stepping inside the new G20, and well, everything is new. Go figure. Of course, the one thing that is the same is the whole center console is still angled toward the driver, which is nice, but the gauges are now digital. I actually think they're not as easy to read as the old ones, but they do show things such as your navigation and your radio station. Uh, and then of course you have the infotainment system, which controls the radio and pretty much the entire vehicle. That noise, by the way, is gesture control. It, it, you can adjust the radio and things with your hands. Um, so it, it's just a, it's a piece de resistance in terms of tech. Uh, but it, it's not quite as pure in terms of the driving experience. The shifter on the old car is about as simple as it can get. There's a little handle behind it and you pull it into drive or park or reverse or neutral or whatever and it just goes into the gear and then you drive away. The shifter in the new 3 Series is a little bit trickier than that old one. So it always returns to a middle position and you have to grab this little lever to put it into drive and reverse. It takes a little bit of practice to get used to, not quite as simple, but it does take up a lot less space, which means I've got cup holders. Um, and on a hot day like today, having cup holders is better than not having cup holders. So I'll take the new shifter in exchange for cup holders. The E30 does have a pretty interesting climate control system in that I've got three sliders and I can precisely choose what percentage of airflow I want going to my head, my feet, and of course the defrost. Um, and it's pretty much infinitely variable uh, and it actually has to give you a little cheat sheet here so you know what position to do the knobs and whatever for the ideal defrost. Some other cool stuff in the old 1988 model, well, you have a good old fashioned traditional handbrake and a load of switches down here. BMW actually put their window switches down here in the center console, as well as ready for this heated seats, which was pretty advanced stuff back in the day. The most advanced piece of tech in this old E30 is, well, the trip computer, which allows you to set things such as your time and allows you to see things such as your average miles per hour, MPG, your range even. Heck, it even shows you your outside temperature, which was pretty advanced stuff for 31 years ago. The coolest thing it does is you can set a code which locks the car out from being driven unless you enter that code. It's like a really early security system. Of course, in terms of features and tech, the, it's no comparison because yes, well, that old one does have an outside temperature gauge, which is pretty neat. This one has a 360 degree camera that moves and adapts to the surface and I can even see a virtual surround like VR. Of course, I have a 
fully customizable cockpit, I have a heated steering wheel, heated seats, automatic climate control. I mean, the list just goes on and on and on about the stuff I have, and a lot of that stuff is really nice. For example, Bluetooth is a nice piece of tech to have. Same with satellite navigation. So, yes, in terms of ease of use and, and what the 3 Series can do, obviously it's, it's progressed a lot. So of course the old car is not going to be anywhere near as safe in an accident because I have one, two, zero airbags. I have no airbags, but because I don't have airbags, I actually do have, well, a, a lot of cubby spaces. So instead of having an airbag, I've got these big bins on top of the dash. I also have bins in the center console and bins in the door, and there's just a lot of places to put your things, which is kind of nice. This old car really is magic. I mean, it's got an authenticity and a... Uh, a true rawness behind it that you just can't replicate in new cars with all the safety equipment and all the weight actually is the big issue. For example, the steering is so direct and it's small so it's easy to kind of whip around. And my favorite part about it is, is the visibility because it's easy to see out of. It's not, you know, a high-waisted, short-windowed vehicle. It's got big windows and it's easy to drive. Some of the things that have changed well a lot, you now have window switches on the door versus in the middle. You have pretty traditional lock and unlock instead of having to use the plunger like in the old car. Um, the headlight buttons are now buttons instead of a little knob. I mean, there's a lot of little things that have changed that have really brought the car into the modern era. One of my favorites being paddle shifters. So yes, while the original car does have an equally great steering wheel that is nice and thick, this car has paddle shifters and a transmission that shifts faster than, I don't know, molasses. Life in the new 3 Series is, well, it's objectively better in just about every way. It feels better made, granted it's got 100,000 less miles, but the materials are of higher quality, everything just feels like it's I mean, the production processes are just higher now than they were back in the day. It's also, you know, world's faster. This is the smallest engine 3 Series you can buy in the U.S., a 2 liter, 255 horsepower. But up here at altitude, it's it's night and day. I mean, this is a quick car by modern standards. It's It'll keep up with, you know, sports cars of today. The old one just, just can't. It also, the steering is faster and the brakes are better and it's got X drive so it's just a more refined place to be. I think the best way to show how far the 3 Series has come or progressed is through the owner's manual because the old car is just 85 pages and that's for 325, 318, 325i convertible, iX, M3, all of it. The new car is 369 pages for just the 3 Series sedan. And of course, it's more comfortable and it's a better car all around, but in terms of the essence of the 3 Series, you still can't beat the rawness and the excitement of an E30. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Which one would you prefer? As always, I'm Tommy with TFL Car. Go back to TFL Car and TFL Classics for more news, views, and real-world reviews.